In this episode, we will be building and launching this Sarnus Explorer probe from Kerbin. Yes, there's lots to go through, so let's get right into it. First, I'm starting to build what I'm calling a Sarnus probe, and it's going to be very, very different from the Joule launcher that you might have seen in one of my previous videos. I'm going to be posting the link in the description below. However, in my Joule videos, I did a lot of small probes packed to one huge launcher. And that proved really tedious in terms of getting to different planets, moons and whatnot. So it was really, really difficult to get all the biomes and then I didn't have connectivity to send them back. So this time I'm not going to do things a little bit different. Yes, I'm going to build one big probe that will have the capability to visit all of the moons of Sarnus. Hopefully, in theory, I have no idea. I mean, this is the first time I'm visiting, trying to visit all in one go. But I'm gonna jam pack it with experiments, fuel, Delta V, communication equipment, and pretty much everything. Because remember, we are playing with remote tech and we are gonna be playing with the signal delay. That means that when we are playing with the signal delay, at Sarnus, we're gonna have a delay of 5 to 10 minutes to make our maneuver, so we have to be really accurate in queuing up everything and have to think every step through. So, the approach with many small landers won't work, simply. Uh, also, I have to note that this will probably be one of my last remote probes before we actually started taking, you know, manned crews further, because I've been honestly neglecting a little bit of my, you know, Kerbal knots because... I just wanted to get enough science so that we could get range, so we could send them to different locations, you know, etc. And unlock a lot of nodes that could make the further playthrough interesting. So, yeah, this is the last of the episodes where, for a while, where we will be focusing on the probes going to very far away places. And probably by the time this probe reaches Sarnas, I will already, might already have a Duna base, who knows? Uh, yeah, transfers to Sarnus take extremely long time, so that I'm just putting it out there, so yeah. Right, so with this de design being, I'm actually trying to jam pack it with as many experiments as I can fit on there, and also I'm trying to make sure that I put a lot of uh, RTGs on it, because at the distance, how far Sarnus is from the Kerbal, there really is no point for solar panels. I mean, no sir, there is no way in hell the solar panels are gonna be producing any amount of feasible energy. And we have not yet fully unlocked the nuclear reactors yet, so I'm going with RTGs. Yeah, I've placed four and I'm gonna probably place a lot more. So, that being said, we have put a lot of science experiments, as you can tell, it's my standard suite, but I've also put the Orbital Observation Telescope, I've also put the uh, Gorsat, and I have put the newly researched Mystery Goose, and uh, I have put the uh, Materials Bay, the streamlined ones. Right, I'm also putting a lot of Communitrons antennas, and my main reasoning behind it is, well, I want to be able to communicate with the probe during its entire flight, so I will have redundancy. That one is pretty much a given. So I'm just trying out to figure, yeah, I'm going to be placing two antennas here, and one of them will be pointing to my long-range polar relay 1 and long-range relay polar 2, rather than focusing on the planet, because I don't know what their cone of coverage is. Alright, so having said that, we said that we wanted this craft to have Delta V to be able to reach all the moons of Sarnus. And that means, of course, fuel lines. So that's something that we need to consider and we need to build the fuel lines. Now, I don't want this craft to have onion staging, I want it to have asparagus staging. So probably we're gonna be doing something like that. Let me just put here, yeah, like six pieces. And obviously that did cut our delta V, I mean, it, it increased and cut it six at the same time. However, I'm thinking that probably I want to be adding, adding a lot of extra... Uh, yeah, we have to add also the radiators because, remember, we are using the nuclear engine and without the radiators, it's... I mean, our Nerva won't be working because we do have heating 
here. Yeah, this is KSP1 after all. By the way, uh, guys, I will be posting a lot more KSP2 content for those of you that might be asking. It's just a matter of me trying to uh, create some more KSP2 content. And also, guys, I've been sick, so sorry about me not posting stuff. And uh, during the Christmas, I'll be going... Oh, sorry, Christmas. During the Easter, I will be going on a brief vacation. So if you don't see many videos from me, well, that's the reason I need a good time rest. It's been really hard. But later than that, we can, of course, we're going to be a lot more new content planned. And there are lots of cool games coming. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Right. So, with that stuff out of the way... As you can tell, I'm doing asparagus staging, and once I'm done with asparagus staging, look, this tiny probe has now roughly, oh, I think I just need to correct one more thingy, but the probe has a total of 5,000 almost delta V, I mean 4,019, so once we put everything together, it will be somewhere around that. Okay, there we go encompass all this in a beautiful fairing that will be three-sided with the clamshell deploy set to on. Nice. <clears throat> then we have to make sure that we correct our staging and that will be putting on a transfer stage that will have its own... Uh, uh, let's put another two high gain antennas, shall we? I mean, does it make sense? No, maybe. Yes, should we? No. Nah. Something like that. Oh yeah, that's gonna be gorgeous. No, I'm actually... I was thinking, should I be including high gain antenna or not? But then again, I realized, let's keep it as is. Alright, so let's put some reaction wheels. We do want a good amount of control authority here. And we have to jam pack this baby with delta, all the delta V that we can master. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to be putting up a skipper here. So there we go. I just want to make sure that my staging is correct that, and that my Nerva fires when it's supposed to. And look, when I add a skipper, now we're at already 7.2 thousand meters per second delta V. Good. And that's for the transfer. Now we have to get this baby to orbit. So. What I want to do, let's go and I'm going to be placing the decoupler followed by a Bagora stage. So let's see, Bagora tank. And on the bottom of that we have our trusty and reliable octopus engine, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so with an octopus engine that gives us 9.5 thousand meters per second which is decent, and then if we add two side boosters, that would be coupled radially, and I'm thinking I should go with either Bagora or Ghidorah even. Yeah, Ghidorah is much bigger, so that would give me even more oomph. Remember, we are creating the oomph galore monster. So, there we go, You, we need a nose cone for you. Now that one is just ridiculous, alright. And now we shall be duplicating that one. There we go, 11,000 meters per second delta V. Now we're talking, let's auto strut everything. Just make sure that things don't noodle wobble. And then we're gonna be creating separatrons. Uh, guys, for some reason, I couldn't get the asparagus staging to work here. So I couldn't get fuel lines feeding. Why? I have no idea. So rather than all three engines firing, I will have the boosters firing first. And then I will have the main engine firing. So for some reason, so it's not going to be like Falcon Heavy Accent. It's going to be two engines and then one engine. Because, I don't know, KSP didn't want to collaborate. Well, it's their loss. Okay, just making sure that I group up everything and then we will be shooting for the stars. Right, so. Shall we place this one here? And I'm placing the antenna on this side. Yeah, that actually looks pretty nifty. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Toggle, toggle. Making sure that we have everything. All right, good. Save it. And let's roll it out to the launch pad. And our Sarnus, uh, Sarnus window is quite far off, but it doesn't matter. 
we still do want to launch this thing into the orbit to be ready. There we go. All right. Undocking the launch clamps and everything and lift off. Now with the two boosters this thing is roughly thrust to weight of 1.2 so it's not really even that efficient. But for reasons completely unbeknown to me fuel lines didn't want to work so I would have to do with only two boosters. Yeah, all right. Enough me ranting about the boosters. We have plenty of Delta V, so let's not be really cynical about it. So, there we go. Accelerating the time by two, by the factor of two, we are climbing upwards. Thrust weight is already 1.4, so there's nothing to mull about. And we are going prograde. All right, so let's point a little bit to the east. And my goal is to get it into 102 or 105 by 105 orbit. And when I do that, that, that will be just perfect. All right. So... We are passing the point of max Q. And I think actually that we have... Our apoapsis is already at 36. We, so we are aligning prograde. And in 20 seconds we will be having a booster stage separation and the main engine ignition. Go, three, two, one, and booster sep confirmed, and the main engine ignition is on. Good. So at this point, we have a total of 9,000 meters per second, which we should be plenty for us to, you know, to get pretty much anywhere. Good. All right, Kirby Napoepsis. And we're gonna not going to be doing gravity assists. I know that we could actually re re save a lot of Delta V if we do gravity assists, but there's no point. So, maneuver node prograde. Execute the burn and make sure that we dump the fairing. All right, just making sure that I've put it into correct stage so we don't accidentally dump the fuel tank because that wouldn't be really helpful now would it all right do we have any signs that we could take care of no not really all right so a total burn time will be 45 seconds with a total of 1043 meters per second to expand so beautiful burn and still we will have some fuel in the core stage that will help us and push us towards Sarnus. There we go. 700 meters per second. 6 and 15. Okay. Good. So now we have to plan the ejection. And I've time skipped a little bit to the time when Sarnus window has happened. And let us add a maneuver node. And then we will be doing the eject angle. So here we go. One eject angle. Let's make sure that we put all the relevant parameters. It's going to be a little bit pricey burn. I've actually, in the transfer window planner, I know you can go get to Sarnas for less, but this one also doesn't have a monstrous amount of transfer time. So that was also my plan. Right. So. The burn will be in 9 minutes and 25 seconds. And imagine, with a thrust of weight of 4.30, our burn time will be 2 minutes and 37 seconds. That alone tells you how far Sarnas is from pretty much everything. So, yeah. All right, I'm just making sure that I'm making final tweaks so that we get really nice capture in the Sarnas gravity well. All right, we'll be po pointing no node prograde, after which we will be executing the maneuver. Just to recap, the maneuver node will be in the, or sorry, the burn will be in 1 minute and 40-ish seconds. I have decided that I don't want to be executing because I'm worried that the flight computer will be doing all kinds of weird stuff. So I figured I'd do this one manually. I can still remote control my probe, so let's kick it. All right. Beautiful screenshot. And for the time being, I have not yet enabled all of the antennas because there's really not the point. Our skipper has ignited and it's going to be burning for roughly two minutes. It's going to be a hefty burn. 
but all in all yeah i'm gonna use this hefty bird to actually ask you guys if you are liking my content so far well do boop the like button and let me know in the comments below what do you like most about this remote tech series do you like probes would you like to see uh, more uh, man missions would you like to see more rovers bases stations let me know what would be your favorite and of course i'll try to oblige so yeah with that thing out of the way we are 1000 meters per second away from our ejection to sarnus which is the uh, one of the outer planets mod and guys a lot of you are asking me for the um for my mod list my mod list will be available in the description of this video it is on my subreddit slash r slash groundforks all right we are approaching we're already getting capture around sarnus so i'm just doing some tiny tweaks to make it nicer good i'm gonna add another maneuver node and i'm just now trying to focus around sarnus to make sure that my maneuver node once i actually execute it hold on that it gets us a really nice and tight encounter so i'm gonna do here we have a total of 4053 meters per second i actually doubt i think we have more but i could be wrong there we go i'm gonna go something f like this it doesn't need to be perfect but maybe even we do a gravity assist on one of its moons which would help us basically get captured for less by the way, do let me know in the comments below, those of you who know, which inner planets of the Sarna system would have the best properties to capture us. I know it's not Ovok because it's too small. Is it Hale or is it others? Please let me know in the comments below. All right. So we have 17, 216 meters per second and that burn will be happening in four years and 108 nine days well of course that means that that burn will be happening in a different episode i mean i can tell you that much i'm not gonna skip four, ahead four years and 109 days by that time we could actually get the base on duna as i promised i'm not saying we will but we might depending on your feedback okay so one thing we need to really do is we need to queue up the science so let me see just sorry not the science we need to make sure that we rename the probe sarnas explorer i'm calling it too because the previous one when i've built uh, had some issues with the battery consumption so here i'm gonna be pointing to my two relays and that's it then we are gonna enjoy the view as we leave the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. And with that, guys, I'm going to say to you, hopefully you will enjoy the today's episode. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you liked and enjoyed. And if you would like to see more, then press subscribe. And I will be seeing you on my next video where I will be launching a station probably around Kerbin. See you then.